Okay, now any object, a little more complicated here, any object is a special type. Okay, it's actually a protocol, but we haven't talked about it yet. But anyway, it's a special type. You can think of it as a type. Protocols are types, I guess. Um, it is used commonly, or used to be, uh, for compatibility with Objective-C APIs, because Objective-C, for those of you who are uh, trying to learn some Objective-C along the way here, Objective-C has a very important type called ID, okay, the type ID, which means pointer to a object of unknown class, okay? So that's a very open-ended type, okay? Swift doesn't do things that way. Swift is strongly typed, okay? It infers types, but they're st it's strongly typed. Um, however, Swift has to work with all those iOS APIs, so it introduced this type called any object. So any object in Swift means a pointer to an object of unknown class, okay? It only works for objects, for classes, not for structs. Um, so it means the same thing as Objective-C. Um, in iOS 9, they fixed Objective-C, so it has almost none of these, okay? There's still a few, but very, very few. Um, so nowadays, it's more used as an opaque type, okay? When you want to have a pointer to an object, and you're not sure what it is, or you don't want anyone to know what it is, okay? So let's talk about um, how we can do this, okay? So classes only, no structs. Um, there is another type, by the way, in Swift called any, which is anything. Could be a struct, could be a class, anything. We almost, in fact, this class we will never use any, okay? You probably never want to use it. It's in there, I think, for just language completeness, but I can't even think of a good explanation of why you would want to use it, so we're not even going to talk about any. But we are going to talk about any object, okay? So where will you see any object? You'll sometimes see it in a method where one of the arguments truly can be more than one different kinds of class, okay? For example, uh, you'll see on Wednesday, prepare for segue, which is a thing that prepares for transitions from one MVC to another. Okay, we're going to have multiple MVCs someday. We're going to want to transition from one to the other. Prepare for segue prepares for that transition. Well, the sender, in other words, the object that initiated the transition, could be lots of different kinds of objects. It might be a button you clicked on. It might be a row in a table. It might be some custom code inside of your controller, okay? So this sender has to be any object, okay? Because we don't know what it is. It's, we don't know if it's a button or a table row or what it is. So any object, okay? So this is a case where here is an object. It could be many things. We don't know what it, it is. So we have to type this as any object, okay? Another example of that is touch digit. If we hadn't, when we control dragged, remember we changed it from any object to UI button? Okay, if we hadn't done that, it would have created touch digit with sender any object, and then touch digit could have been sent by a UI button or maybe by a UI slider, okay, or something else. And we didn't do that because inside touch digit we wanted sender to be a UI button so we could send it current title and other button things. Um, but it could have, could have been any object, all right? So uh, another use for any object is when you want to return essentially a cookie, okay? A cookie is something you give back where you're giving it to someone, they don't know what's inside of it, you're not going to tell them, the only thing they can do is give it back to you, okay? So the cookie just saves some state, remember something, and you can give it back. So like browsers have cookies, right? You go visit a browser site, the site stores some stuff about itself and about you uh, in their cookie. When you go away and come back to that site, it looks in the cookie and it can interpret it, okay? But it gives the cookie to the browser, the browser has no idea what's in there. Okay, it's opaque. It's any object as far as the browser is concerned. All right? So how do we use a variable type any object when we don't know what the heck it is? Okay? And the answer is we have to convert it to a type that we do know what it is. Okay? Now, this conversion might not be possible, right? Because it, that thing might not be of that type when we try to convert it. So we use this as keyword in Swift to try to convert it to the other type. Okay? In other words, try to treat that, thing, that any object as something else, optionally. So this, is an, this returns an optional. Okay? We um, usually, usually use it with if let, this as thing, because it returns an optional, right? So if I have this uh, local variable here, AO, which is an any object, and I've assigned it to something, some class, I don't know what it is, okay? But I want to try and use AO as if it were of class, some class. Okay, AO might be of some class, and I'm going to see if it is, and if it is, I'm going to use it as some class. I say if I can let foo 
equal AO as some class, then in here, there's going to be a local variable foo, which is not going to be any object. It's going to be of type some class. Got it? So it's just, just that simple. We're essentially casting, if you want to use that terminology, casting any object to be some class, conditionally. OK? So that's how we use something of any object. Either that, or we don't know what's in there, and we just pass it around. Okay? We just pass it around to people who know what to do with it, and we don't know what to do with it if it's a cookie. Okay? So um, what would code look like, let's say, on touch digit? If we had touch digit and we had any object instead, we'd probably say, if we can let sending button equal this sender as a UI button, then we'll treat it as a button, get its current title, and go. Otherwise, else, if we can let sending slider equal the sender as a UI slider, then we'll let the digit equal the sending slider's value, which is a double. We'll convert it to an int, and we'll convert that to a string. <laughs> okay? That's how we get the digit. But you see how we're doing kind of if let else, if let else with this optional thing? That's how we would use that any object. All right. Um, another use of any object is property lists. Okay? So property lists are uh, essentially any combination of array, dictionary, string, double, int, NSData, and NSDate. Okay? If you build any data structure out of only those classes, you've got a property list. So it's just a word. It's just a term we use to mean that. Okay? That's what it means. And you might be like, oh, wait a second. Uh, array, uh, any object has to be a class. It can't be a struct. But string, array, dictionary, double, those are structs. So how can these ever be in a property list? How could it ever be in any object? And the answer is the bridging. Okay? We've got this automatic bridging to Objective-C. Okay? It automatically treats them like NS dictionary, NS array, NS number, which are all classes, and it allows them to be any object. Okay? Now, um, these property lists are plastered around blindly. Uh, the people who are looking in them are only knowing that they're dictionaries and arrays of strings and dates and stuff. They don't know anything about what that data means. Okay? They're just being passed around. So let's look at an API in iOS that uses a property list to understand it better. It's called NSUser Defaults. What NSUser Defaults does is it takes a property list and makes it persistent on disk. So when your app quits and runs again and you look it up again, it's there. So it's basically a database of property lists, a database of structures with dictionaries, arrays, strings, dates, okay? That's what it is. Um, it's a small database, so don't use it for big things. You wouldn't want to store like a dictionary, the entire English language in there. Um, it's for small things like settings and things like that. The API on it is very simple. You just say set object property list here for key string, and then you can look it up and get the property list back. So here you can see how you're just passing it around you're storing it as a cookie, and its user defaults has no idea what's inside there. It just knows it's only arrays, dictionaries, strings, ints, et cetera. Okay? Um, it can also uh, restore smaller things, like you can say set double, and it'll make a little property list out of a double, because a double by itself is a property list, right? Because it's one of those classes, okay? just like array is. Um, how do you use user defaults? You create um, a shared one using this class or type method, NS user defaults, standard user defaults. This gives you the shared instance of, standard, of user defaults. And then you just say uh, to it, get me a certain property list, write this property list out. Um, the changes you make will automatically be saved eventually, but if you want to force them to be saved on disk, you can do synchronize which returns a bool, which we almost always ignore because it's not clear what to do if it fails. It would probably only fail if your disk were full. I'm not sure what you're going to do at that point. Uh, but anyway, we usually ignore that return value. Okay. Um, another example of property list uh, might be in our calculator brain. And I'm going to show you a demo of this really quick here, which is what if we wanted to get the program that's in the calculator? Right now, our calculator could be programmed by saying 5 times 4 times 3 equals. That's put a program in the calculator, right? 5 times 4 times 3. It's kind of a simple program. Um, it'd be cool if we could get that program, and the person who got it doesn't know anything about our internal data structure, so it's any object to them. And then later, they could come back to a calculator brain and say, oh, run this program that you gave me earlier. You see? So we use any object as kind of this opaque 
program. Okay. Now this doesn't seem very valuable right now, but it's going to be real valuable in assignment two when you're going to add variables to your calculator. You're going to be able to say three times x times five equals. Okay, where x is a variable, and then you can run this. Then you get this program using this code I'm going to show you here, a property list, uh, and then you, later you can they can set the variable x and run it again. Maybe set the x to something else and run the program again and again and again. You see, so. Um, this would be a good use of any object because the calculator brain doesn't want to give away its internal data structure for, how, structure for how it represents a program, but it's happy to let someone have the program and give it to them later and they'll run it again later. Make sense? See why we want it? Now, why would we make it a property list? Because it would be nice to store it in user defaults. All right, I got a program, I'm going to put it in user defaults. Next time my program runs, I can pull it out and ask a calculator brain to run it. You see, it's just more flexible to be a property list. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a var called program in our calculator brain. It's going to be gettable and settable. When you get it, it gets the current program in that the calculator brain has just run. And when you set it, it runs the program. Okay? All right, so I'm going to do that as the demo. I'm going to finish off the slides here first. Uh, one thing about this casting, you can cast other things besides any object. Okay? So, you, for example, uh, you can look at this slide later, but you could have a class that's a subclass of another class. Okay, and you can try and cast using as to get the subclass. You're not sure whether it's a subclass, but you can cast, and as will tell you whether it is. Okay, um, in this case, for example, if I have view controller, the base class of our view controller, we can't say VC display value because this is a calculator view controller thing. But if I went and asked it, okay, if I took this VC and asked it to calculator view controller, now I could use display value. Okay, so as is for more than just any object. Okay, and yes, you can force with as exclamation point. It'll crash if you can't do it. 